Okay, this is Dr. Martin uh, recording the lecture for Friday uh, for Logic Design, uh, the 20th of November. So uh, today I'm going to, so we, we've covered all the new material. There's no new material to cover left. Uh, we've covered all 20 chapters of the book. But what I'll do today and for the next uh, several uh, periods, so we have one Monday, oh, Friday, today, we have one Monday next week, Wednesday next week, and Monday and Wednesday the following week. And I believe that Wednesday is the 2nd of December, I think, and that will be the end of it. Um, so, but that's actually quite a few. So that's uh, this one plus uh, four more, and I'll just do a lot of review. In the meantime, um, those of you who haven't taken some of the tests, those of you who did not present a project, uh, uh, the group project, then there's some opportunity for you to get this corrected. Uh, so, um, and I also said that uh, up until tomorrow, anybody who didn't, who's missing a bunch of homeworks, can turn in up to three homeworks. So, so those are your, those are, those are your options. Um, after that, you're done. Now, if you want to take, if you want to, if you want to, if you didn't take the second test. I'll still let you do that. I think there were a handful of people for some reason that didn't take it. So if you're watching this video, make sure you let me know that you want to take it and we'll arrange a time for you to do that. Otherwise, you're just going to get a zero for that test, uh, which is probably not going to work out well um, grade-wise. And this is a gateway course. You only, get two, you only get two shots to do this course. If you don't pass it in the two shots, then... Uh, you have to get waivers to be waived to try it again. Uh, otherwise, you can't do um, electrical engineering any, or computer engineering. All right. And maybe not engineering at all. I can't remember how that works. I guess it's just electrical and computer. All right. So anyway, um, so I'm going to work some of these problems. And then, uh, then the uh, week of the 15th, uh, we'll have... The th we'll have uh, yeah, so we'll have Monday and Wednesday. 27th is Thanksgiving, and then we'll have uh, Monday and December 2nd, Wednesday. Now, the final exam. it In the final exam schedule, it's scheduled for December 9th. Um, uh, but I, what I may do, I may make it available sooner, and hopefully students will just get it done, and, and uh, I'll be able to start working on the grades a lot earlier than normal. So we'll see. I I, uh, I'm not sure what the rules are, but uh, if I can give it earlier, I'll just do it earlier. Um, okay, so that having been said, let's uh, we'll get on with it here. So let me we'll get rid of this. And so what I'm going to do, I'm going to I'm just going to work some tests, and I'll do that on the thing. Uh, so I think what I'll do is I'll shrink this, uh, uh, I'll make this bigger. And I'm going to switch the camera out to uh, the document camera. And then I'm probably going to put that over here. And uh, yeah. And then we'll see. I'm going to hopefully make this higher so we can see most of it. Uh, it's always a little tricky getting this set up correctly. Um, and then so, so here's the top. Yeah, so this needs to go back a little bit. Uh, yeah, something like that. Okay, and then the bottom's down here. So, I don't know, I guess we need it up even higher. Uh, so, yeah, so that's more the top there. Okay, and then and it's kind of like here. So maybe I'll just do a half sheet at a time. Okay, I, I, that'll help me. All right, um, and then I'll bring this other thing up so you can see my smiling face. Okay, all right, that's me, and looks like I need to comb my hair. All right, so anyway, um, whatever. This is my day. I don't have to go in, so I'm kind of grubby. All right, uh, so I want to work mostly some of the some of the design problems. So I'm gonna I'm gonna do that. So let me first do this one. So here's an here's a um, an SM chart. 
Um, yeah, that's hard to see. Uh, maybe I need to focus it. Hmm. Well, crap. That's not good. Let me see if I can... All right. All right, so I'll do it on this one because it's a whole lot more visible. Um, all right, and then let me put my stuff back over here. And we'll move this back. All right. All right, so... Um, yeah, so here is our, uh, so here's the SM chart. Now notice we have one, two, three state boxes, which means we have three blocks. This one has an X, this one has an X. So we have an X input in all three. The only one with conditional outputs, uh, mealy outputs is this one, uh, th but all three of them have a more output. So let's see how, and then here is the flip-flop encoding. 0, 0, 0, 1, and 1, 1. So it's done in out of straight binary order. We, we flipped it like we like like it's aligned up for the, for these uh, for our standard K map or something. All right. So uh, so here there's, here's the coding. So S0 is A, so A prime, B prime. S1 is A prime, B. And S2 is A, B. How many state blocks are there? There are three state blocks. Is this a mealy more or both? It is both. It's got these two mealy outputs and a, a more, more, and a more associated with the three states. How many inputs does this circuit have? Only one, X. Okay, so what is our D input for our A flip-flop? What is the D input for the B flip-flop? And what are, what, are the, what are the equations for our ZA output, ZB output, ZC output, Z1, and Z2? All right, so let's do this. Okay, so um, I really wish... Maybe if I blow this up a little bit and only print this page, I don't even know if that'll work. Uh, yeah, maybe it will. So let's 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 uh, let me see if I can just print this page. Print um, uh, this page, and then uh, and then I don't know if we can print it if we can make it bigger or what. Let's see, custom margins, pro, uh, uncollated. Um, yeah. And then, um, and I think we can make it bigger. All right, well, anyway, let's, let's just print that. Yeah, I don't know why that's poor. Well, it's a little better. Let me uh, let me let me see if we can uh, expand it here. Okay. Enlarge. Okay, I think I can do it now. Let's do this. All right, so back over here. And yeah, let me just fold this up. Perfect. All right. And I will move this over here. And I will 
shrink it down and then we will uh, then we'll shift this out No. No. Oh, you have to move it up. That's the deal. Okay, got it. All right. So here's so here's this. Now again, one, two, three blocks. So first, what we're going to do is we're going to try and come up with the. Uh, we'll come up with the. Uh, the the D sub. Uh, a and then we'll do the D sub B the two inputs of the flip-flops a and B all right so for D sub a the way you do this you find all of the nodes where a is one so a is not one here it's a zero it's not one here it's a zero but it is one there so now we have to account for all paths into this node one path then clearly comes from s1 through X and X has to be equal to one and then we go in the other path comes through here, x is 1, and it re-enters. Okay, so this path, because this node is a is 0, 1, so that's a prime b, So and x is 1, so that's a prime b x, so that's this path right here. And then this path, since it's a b, it's going to be a b, and x is 1 here, a b x. So this one is a prime b x plus a bx which actually equals bx uh, bx okay now let's do the b okay so b is zero here one here so so we have to account for this path and then it's one here so we have to count for these two paths well we've already accounted for those two paths so we can say db equals bx plus and then we just need this path this path comes in from here this node then is going to be a prime b prime and x is also equal to 1, so it's going to be x, a prime b prime x. So that accounts for this path. There's only one path in here. So that's bx, which accounts for this, this, and then this path. So that is going to be bx plus a prime b prime x. Now, because we have a bx here and an a prime b prime x here, we can drop the prime, the b prime, and that just gives us bx plus a prime x and the reason for that is very simple let's say b is 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 1 well then this term and then this term would depend on x as with this term so so this this term would take priority anyway and if b is 0 then we still have to depend on the a prime and the x so so we're left with bx plus a prime x that and this dropping this that's theorem uh, I believe that's uh, the uh, Simplification theorem uh, three, okay, S three. All right. Uh, well, sorry, actually, I think it's uh, ten, ten, nine, ten, eleven. I think it's eleven. I think it's uh, theorem eleven. All right. Now, what about what about these outputs? Well, this is easy. Z a, Z a is just equal to when you're at this node, which is a prime b prime. Okay. ZB is just uh, ZB is just a prime b, and ZC is just ab. Now Z1 you have to be in this node, and x has to be zero, so this one has to equal um, a b x prime, and this one has to equal a b x. All right, so that's that's solved. Okay, so let's go let's go to another one. Hopefully, we have we can see some of these other ones. Uh, let me go back to here. Uh, let's see. All right, so let's go. We'll go on on the way down to. Uh, let's see here. All right, let's look at this one. This is this is a three bit counter to count the sequence zero one two. One, uh, sorry, 0, 5, 2, 1, 7, 4. Back to 0. 0, 7, 2, 1, 7. Uh, sorry, golly. 0, 5, 2, 1, 7, 4. 0, 5, 2, 1, 7, 4. And so forth. Round and round it goes. 
Now, what's the input to this, to this problem? There is no input. There's no x coming in. All we're doing is we're just changing the status of the flip-flops. What's the output? There's actually no defined output. The output is really just the state of the flip-flops, which you might represent, say, with an LED or something, or you might even have a circuit to print it out as a number in a seven-segment display, but, but there's basically really no, no printout. All right, so, so how do we do this? Well, the first thing we do is we finish the truth table. So if we're in state zero, and we're going to order the states in binary order, but they're, they're like when we're in state zero, that doesn't mean we're going to state one. When we're in state one, that doesn't mean we're going to two. When we're in two, that doesn't mean we're going to three. No, in fact, when we're in zero, we're going to five. When we're in uh, one, we're going to seven. When we're in two, we're going to one. Uh, three is not one of the legal states. What, four is not one of the legal states, right? Three isn't. Where's four? Oh, four is. When we're in uh, four, we're going to zero. When we're in five, we're going to two. Uh, six is not one of the legal states, so that's a don't care. And then when we're in seven, we're going to four. All right, so let's put all that in. All right. So here we have, we're in one, so one, we go to seven. So that's gonna be one, crap. Uh, just goes crazy. All right, so we're going from one to seven, following this right here. There's state one, and the next state in our order, in our count order is seven. So. Here we are, we're in one, we're going to seven. So, one, one, one. Now, here we are in two. Uh, so, where do we go from two? Two, we go to one. So, that's zero, zero, one. Now, we're in three, it's a don't care, so x, x, x. Four, where's four? Four is right here. So, four, we're going to zero. And then five, five, we're going to two, two, so zero, one, zero. And then in six, don't care, seven, we're going to four. One, zero, oops, one, zero, zero. Okay, now we have to extract these into these tables. So we'll do this one for A, we'll do this one for B, we'll do this one for C. So let's take the A column. So it's 1, 1, 0, X. So it's going to be 1, 1, 0, but I'm not going to put in the zero, so just ignore that, and X. It's already there. Put in the X. I did that to keep the students somewhat out of trouble. And then the next group, 0, 0, X, 1. So 0, 0, X, one, but I'm going to take out the zeros. Okay, because they just confuse me. Now, how are we going to solve this? Well, so uh, looks like looks like what we should do is insert a couple of loops. Let's do that. We'll insert a couple of loops, and uh, then we'll copy that. And then we'll go this one first. So, crap. So I'm going to put it on these two. Oops, we have to change the fill. No fill. And then we have to change the fill on this one too. No fill. And then... We're going to move this one. All right. Now, you you could obviously have done it some other ways, but this makes a lot of sense. You could also do this one. So there are two equivalent solutions. Doesn't really matter on that one. Um, so I guess we could also do, uh, we could do this. We could also do this one, right? That one would be fine too. So you just have to pick one of those solutions and no fill.
Okay. So those those are the those are there are two equivalent solutions. Now I'm just going to get rid of this one and not do this one. And you might, and there are times when you might want to pick one versus the other. But anyway, so this is just going to be, since the top is going to be A, B, C down the side, this is going to be A prime, B prime. Oh. A prime, B prime plus A, C. Or, sorry, A, B. So that's, that's D sub A. Now D sub B, same thing. We're just gonna take this column and we're gonna put it in this map. We're remembering to flip the rows. Since it's a three variable map, we don't have to flip any columns. So we're gonna put in 0, 1, 0, X, 0, 1, 0, X. So we'll put a one here. And then um, 0, 1, X, 0. 0, 1, X, 0. All right, so this is easy. Uh, we're just gonna, here, I'll take one of these. Um, we'll copy this, paste it. Bring it over here, we'll rotate it. And we'll cover these with it. So we don't need the don't cares. We need this don't care, but we don't need this one here, or this one here. And that's just going to be a single term. That's just going to be, uh, takes A goes out. It's just going to be uh, B prime C. All right. And then now the last one, 1, 1, 1, X. So 1, 1, what? 1, what the heck? 1 x well 1 1 1 x yeah okay let me <clears throat> okay and then the uh, okay so now the so the last one then the d uh, sub c well that's easy so we just do the same thing. One 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 or one 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 x. So it's going to be yeah. So it's going to be oh right one 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 x and then zero 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 x. So these are all zeros. Okay. So so that's it. So it's just going to be one big loop and. That loop just needs to be a little bit bigger. And then. There you go. And that's just going to be A prime. Now, what about the. Uh, so is that it? Yes, that is it. That's all there is. You remember there are two different equivalent answers for a so it or it could be a b or um, uh, b c and that's it okay now here's a here's another one this is a four bit non-sequential and here's what it counts I, 1, 5, 9, A, or 10, 11, or B, and 1. So we're going to have lots and lots and lots of uh, don't cares. So 1 goes to 0, 1, 0, 1. Yeah, 0. Oops. That's a zero. Maybe I'll see if I can do this one on the camera. Hmm. 
Well, would I not print out this one? <clears throat> no. no. Should be the page. Oh, okay. Different exam. Well, let me print this out. Okay. I don't know. Maybe I need more light. For some reason, this is not very bright. It's a little better. Okay. All right, so so from so from one we go to five, one to five, from two. There is no two, so that's a don't care. Three, three. There is no three, so that's a don't care. Let me get on my glasses so I can actually see this. Don't care. Four. There's no four, so that's a don't care. Five, there is a five, five goes to nine. Six, no six, so that's a don't care. Seven, no seven. Eight, no eight. Nine, nine goes to ten. Ten goes to eleven. Eleven goes to uh, back to one. And these are all don't cares. All right, so now, so th let's do the X. So we start with don't care, zero. Don't care, don't care. Don't care, one. Don't care, don't care. Don't care, one, one, zero. And then don't care, don't care, don't care, don't care. Now, all these don't cares are going to be the same. So I'm going to do these. And then we'll just fill in the numbers. So we'll say this is A, this is D sub B, this is D sub C, and this is D sub D. Four flip-flops, four flip-flop inputs. All right, so that's good. I don't know why that is so goofball. That's just not very bright. Let me, let me see it can come in a little bit. Oops, crap. This always does that, but it is really a problem. Oh, 
Okay, and then I'm going to move this over here. And then we'll... You couldn't even see the other, I, I now realize. I'm sorry. All right. So, so when I filled out this table, all I did was use this. And this is 1, 5, 9, 10, 11, and back to 1. 1, 5, 9, 10, 11, back to 1. Okay? So for one, for 0, don't care. For 1, 5. For 2, don't care. 3, don't care. 4, don't care. 5, 9, 6, don't care. 7, don't care. 8, don't care. 9 to 10, 10 to 11, 11 to 0, and then don't care, don't care, don't care, don't care. I put in all the don't cares. I put the first one in for uh, for A, and so there are these. Uh, so... Um, so the A we can do we can do this with this and we can do uh, we can do this and this so it's going to take three terms for this one the first term is going to be D prime so so the uh, I don't even see where it was so yeah, I, well I said you don't have to do the final expression, but the d sub a is going to equal d prime plus uh, these two, and that one's going to be uh, a prime c prime. Or, no, sorry, a, a c prime plus b c prime, and that's it. Now there's other ways you can do this. Oh, you know what? This one can be this whole thing here, so that could just be b. So, yeah, so that's a little bit better. Yeah. All right. So D prime plus AC prime plus B. And then the DB, we'll just do a couple of them. All right, let's call, do the DB. So it was X1, XX, X0, XX, X0, 0, 0, 0, X. So the only one is this one. And it looks like uh, looks like we'll just get this with this. So that's that's just going to be that's just going to be uh, a b. So the d sub b is going to be a prime b prime, not a b, but a prime b prime. All right. And then the d sub c that's just going to be this one. I guess I'll do it. So zero zero zero. So the only one comes up at nine. So eight nine. 10 and then 11 0 so so we have so we got so we can do this whole thing here like this and then uh, we can do this so that's just going to be uh, a c prime and this is just going to be uh, b prime sorry d prime so that's just going to be d prime plus a c prime, and finally the d sub d. Uh, we just have a we have a one here, and then a one here, and then a zero one there, and then a uh, oh sorry, one one two ones there. So so this will get that. And this will get that. So that's going to be that's going to be C, and this is going to be A prime. So the D sub D is going to be A prime plus C, and that's it. Yeah. Okay, so on the final exam, I will give you either a three-variable problem or a four-variable non-sequential counter problem. And now I've worked both of these. You should know, you should be very, uh, oh, yo, you can't see, sorry, you can't see this. And I'll move this back over here. All right, so I'll either give you a, uh, a three or a four-variable non-sequential counter problem.
and you can and just make up your own non-sequential sequence and practice doing it. These are very straightforward, and there's really no reason uh, why you shouldn't uh, just nail these because they're they're pretty straightforward. Okay. Okay, what's next? So uh, let's see. I wanted to go through a couple of these other design problems. So I'm going to do this one right here. Now this one is very straightforward, and there's really no no reason that you can't get this one. But hopefully I can print this out. Uh, let's see. I probably already have it right here, and hopefully it's yeah. So let me. I'll, I'll just copy it and make it a little bit bigger. I'll blow it up a little bit. All right, we'll just do, we'll just do, we'll just do. Okay, uh, I can't tell what's what. Yeah, we need to go over here. Oh, sorry, I did not realize I was still recording. Okay, okay, all right. So this is this is a problem I ask on every test for the last twenty years, um, and so I'll probably ask it again. Uh, so a sequence detector has an input x and an output z. The network outputs f equals zero unless it sees the sequence one zero zero or zero 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 where f should equal 1. So you have two targets. Your two targets are 1, 0, 0, and 0, 0, 0. Now, obviously, when I put it on the test, I'll probably give you different targets, but they'll be similar. And the network resets as soon as the, lar as the target cannot be realized. If the target is realized, it also resets. Draw the state graph for a more network using the partial graph provided. Note that you should go from S0 to S1 regardless of the first input value. And that's because if the first input value is 1, you still have the potential target. If the first input value is 0, you still have a potential target. And the last two values are the same. So, so really, this is really equivalent to don't care, 0, 0. Because the first one can be either a 1 or a 0, and it won't matter. So you just take the first one in. It is always the first element of the target, and that puts you in as S1. And S1, uh, so you go to S1, and the, you output a 0 still, and it means first uh, item detected. In this case, it's either a 1 or a 0. Now, now that you're in, now that you're in S1, all right, then uh, you got two possibilities in S1. One possibility is you get an X, and the other possibility is you get a zero. Well, so if you get a zero, that would be the second item in either target. So you're going to go to S zero on a zero. Now notice we don't put the outputs on the links because it's a more. The outputs are right here in 
the nodes. And notice there's only one node where the output is one, that's when we have a target. That, that also means, that, that may mean more than just a target, in this case it does, it means a target and we're in reset condition. But anyway, so with a zero we're going to go to S2, which means we have the first and the second item detected. Okay? Which really is either one zero or zero zero. Now, uh, what if we're in S1 and we get a one? Well, let's see. What does it say? What does it say? The network resets as soon as the target can't be realized. So we don't have any choice. We have to go back to S0 on a one. Now, if it didn't say that, we could stay here because we'd have the first item in the next sequence. But it doesn't allow overlapping sequences. It has to reset. So there it is, it's reset. All right, now, we're in S0, two possibilities. We get a zero or a one. If we get a one, then, then that's not the target. So on a one, we're gonna go back up here to reset. But on a zero, we have, we have the target now, Eureka. And so we output a one and we're in S3. So S3 means target. But it also means something else. Now that we're in, now that we've received the target, the next value should begin the next sequence of three three inputs, or the next possible sequence of three inputs. And so, 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 if on the next input we went up to reset, we would waste that input. And since the first input in the sequence can be a one or a zero the next sequence will, will satisfy the condition that we've gotten the first item. So we might as well go up here on a zero R a one. And now that completes. We have two paths. This one has is the same path for zero and one. We have a path for zero and a path for one. We have a path for zero and a path for one. And here we have a path for zero or one. So we have two paths described out of every node. And uh, we have our desired target identified with an output of one for Z. And Z is zero everywhere else. And we have covered it. So let's fill in the state table. So from S1 on a zero, we go to S2. And on a one, we go back to S0. From S2 on a zero, we go to S3. And on a one, we, on a one, we go back to S0. And on S3, on a 0 R01, we're going to go to S1. Now, in S2, we're going to output a 0, but in S3, we're going to output a 1. Now, one thing you should realize here, so, it's, so S3 represents target and reset. Now, notice how when you have a more network with no melee outputs, one of the things that happens is that uh, that the outputs kind of lag behind the next inputs, right? This output of one is because you're in S3, but the the next, but the, this column represents the next X that comes in and takes you to a new state. In the more, that next X is what defines the output. But in the, I'm sorry, in the melee, that next X is what defines the output, and you have two columns. One, for, or, or if you have one input, you have two columns. If you have two inputs, you have four columns. If you have three inputs, you have eight columns, and so forth, two to the n. Because these columns really define what's going to happen next, and the outputs in a melee are forward-looking because they're connected with what's going to happen next. They're they're connected with the links. Whereas in a more, they're backward-looking. They're what's they're they're what's what's previously happened. We're in state S3, and as long as we're in state S3, our output's going to be a one. All right. Okay, so let me switch this back again. Uh -oh. This camera gets pretty warm. It's kind of interesting. Okay, and we'll flip this up. Right, sorry. Okay, and I'll move this back over. All right, now let's look at this one. This is a little more complicated, and I think we'll end with this one. Um, I'm going to work this one on here. Oh, well, yeah, I guess I will. Um, so 
design a Mealy sequential circuit which investigates the sequence x and, and will produce an output of z equals 1 for any input sequence ending in 1, 0, 0, 1, or 0, 1, 0. Otherwise, z equals 0. The circuit does not reset to the start state when an output of z to 1 occurs. So you can have, over, theoretically, you can have overlapping sequ sequences. A minimum solution of six uh, requires six states. And here we are. Here's your tri trial sequence. So look, you get zero, you output zero because you don't have either you don't have zero one zero or one or one zero zero one yet. Then you get a one, still nothing. Then you get a zero. Bang! You've got that first target, that zero one zero, the, the second target, I guess. You output z equals one. Now you get a one, and then you get a zero and a zero. Oh, but look, you got zero one zero again. So there's another target, and then here you have another zero and a one. Bang, you have one zero zero one. So you you have overlapping targets. You have you know the first and second targets overlap and the second and the third targets overlap. P pretty cool, right? And then you get another zero, boom, you have a zero one zero. All right. And then you have a one here, that, and that's nothing, so you get a zero out. And so um but that could be the first thing in the next state. And this zero one if you got another zero now, you'd have another target. So you so uh, so you just have to really pay attention. And it's interesting. Once you start, you never go back to the start. So you you never you never have nothing on this problem, in, except at the very beginning. You never have nothing except at the very beginning. So it's kind of kind of a bit of a funny problem. And really, you almost don't even need this. Uh, because you could you could define you could define that if you had all zeros before then you could say well you really start in state s1 so I guess in theory you could almost get rid of the s0 and uh, and then and then assume that your previous inputs were all zeros so then you would be in s1 at the start but we didn't do that we assumed an s0 which is probably not bad but uh, but anyway it's just food for thought Okay, so let's let's work this. So we start in that state S zero. Two choices. You get a zero or one. So uh, I'm gonna let's see. I'm gonna put in. Uh, I guess I'll do. Uh, I think I'll do a little box. Let's see. So I need. Yeah, I need a little box. Insert shapes text box. And I'm gonna I'm gonna put in. Uh, I'll do a text box for one. And then, and then my outputs are always going to be zero, except I'll sh uh, where I, where we'll put something. So I'm going to do slash, and then I, I, I guess I will I'll, I'll put the zero in. Okay, one slash zero, and then I'm going to, and then I'm going to do zero slash the zero. All right. So so the first thing we do is we get a zero. Okay. So that's going to take us in this link. Or we can get a 1. And S1 is, no, I take it back. It's, I did it wrong. A 0 goes this way, and a 1 goes this way. Okay, and then... All right, now in S1, two possibilities, right? In S1, we get a, so what does S1 mean? It means we've got the first one of 1001, okay? Now, if we get a, another one, then we still have the first one. So, so let's do this. But if we get a zero, then we're going on. So if we get a zero... And we're going on. I guess we could make all these things, push them to the back. Um, well, let's see. Uh, sorry. text box. Yeah, and I should be able to do them all. So I'm going to do this. Oh, 
Okay, now. No, it won't let me format the thing. Oh, that not did. Layout. Uh, uh, bind X. Okay, now, now they all look like that. That's good. Okay, now, now, um, so there's S1. Now in S2 we have one zero. So uh, if we get a one in it, if we get another zero in S2, then that's then we would have one zero zero. Okay, so that would take us to S3. So let's do that. So that's another zero. Can't remember what I had here. Let's just put it in. Oh. Yeah, but that's not going to be right, so I'm going to delete that. So, so that's going to put us here. And then, um, make another one. Just so we have a couple handy here. We might need one more. Dang it. And then um, we might need some ones. I, yeah, it won't let you do it. Should be enough. All right. Now, in S2, if we get a 1, what should we do? So this takes a little bit of thought. So if we get a 1, that means we have 1, 0, 1, right? So we have 1, 0, 1. So, we, so that means we, we, don't, we, no, we no longer are working on this target. But we now are working on this target because we've got 0, 1 of that target. So we'll say S5 equals 0, 1 of that target. So, so we'll, we'll put this here. Now, let's say we're in S3. Okay, S3, if we get a 1, then, uh, then if we get a 1, then we're going to have uh, 1, 0, 0, 1. Now where should we go? Well, we should go to we should go to four, because now in uh, actually we should go to uh, four. Let's see. So that's uh, yeah, because we've got zero one zero of zero one zero. Uh, yeah. Okay, we got a zero. It seems like we have a zero one. Yeah, we do have a zero one. So if we get a, if we get a, yeah, if we get a, if we get a z one, then we should go to five because then now we have zero one. That's right. And uh, so on a one, we're going to go to five, and we have the target. So we're going to output a one. But if we get a zero, we don't have the target. And what we have then instead, we have, so what we have then instead is one, zero, zero, zero. So we only have the first possible zero in zero, one, zero. Uh, now, that puts us to four. Now in four, we have the first zero, which you also would get by coming from S zero. So if we get a one, that, that should send us to five. But if we get another zero, we still have the first zero, so we'll just stay here. Now, in 5, which is the last node we have to work out, we have 0, 1 of a possible 0 and 0. So if we get a 0, then uh, then then we're going to have we're going to have 0, we're going to have 1 0 of the 1 0 0 1 sequence. Um, and we'll also but we'll also have uh-huh yeah, there's a, I think there may be a mistake here. Let's see. So if we get one zero, 
but we also potentially have the first zero in the next sequence but let's see if that'll work out so let's go so on a on a on a on a on a zero on a one we have zero one one it's what we have so we go to s1 because all we have is the first one in the next sequence okay so i'm gonna i'm gonna do one more of those okay but if we get a zero, then that's when we have to go here. So we so sitting in five, we already have zero one. That's what we've got. And maybe other zeros in front of that. So if we get a one, now we have zero one one, and the only thing really then we have is a one. So we go to S1, where we have one of one zero zero one detected. But if we get a zero, now we have a whole bunch of zeros. No, uh, yeah, we, uh, now, now we have, okay, we went here on a one. So now if we get a zero, we have, okay, uh, this is interesting. Yes, if we get, so here we are in five with zero one detected. If we get a zero, that's our target again. So now we have to output a one. And what do we have? We have, uh, yeah. If if so, if we get that, we we have this target, and we have one zero of a possible one zero zero one sequence. Okay, yeah. So that's fine. And then, well, what if we so so we get a one, that gives us zero one zero. So if we get another one. We could we go back to S5, but if we get a zero, we go to S3. Okay, that all works. So that's the correct answer. Now, how many flip-flops will be required? Okay, so we have one, uh, so we have zero, one, two, three, four, five. So we have six nodes. So we can do it with three flip-flops. So we have to have three. And then you should fill in all these things, but you can do it directly from this state table. Okay? All right. Now this is this is another problem uh, I always ask some problem like this I won't I won't necessarily ask this one of course I'll ask something similar so this one I, I'd rate this one as uh, as a very difficult uh, problem for you to work and most students would make mistakes on this probably only three or four students out of the whole class would get it right on a test oh yeah your mommy's calling you better go see what she wants yeah go yeah My wife is calling the dog. <laughs> okay, so who was sitting under the desk on my feet. All right, so just so you know, this is a difficult problem. I won't ask you probably this as hard a problem on the test, or if I do, I will expect that most of you will get it wrong. Uh, and, you know, I'll sort of give partial credit. Um, so it won't be a big deal if you miss it. Um, <clears throat> so this, yeah, but this is challenging. And, and if we do this, so now... Now let's let's do a couple of these. Um, so from S zero, uh, then on an x equals zero, we're going to S four. Okay. And on a and then on a one, we're going to S one. All right, then um, in S1, on a, on a one, we're staying here. Oh, and, and we're also outputting, we're outputting zeros, zeros. So from S1, if we get a one, we're staying in S1. And on a uh, zero, we're going to S2. Okay, well, let's see if we can make all this line up. Perfect. Then um, 
but we're still outputting zeros. All right, now on S2, on a zero, we're going to S3. And on a one from S2, we're going to S5. Okay, and we're doing zeros. All right, so you can see how this sort of starts to fill out. Uh, it's very easy to do to take the state graph and to fill it. Now let's look at this one. Same thing here. Uh, well, okay, we didn't. Let's do one more. Uh, so we're in, a, let's go to S3. S3, if we get a 1, we're going to S5. So if we get a 1, we're going to S5. And if we get a, a 0, we're going to S4. And yeah, and then oh, we'll finish it. So so, but what about this? Well, on a zero, we're going to output a zero. But on a one, we're going to output a one right here because we have the target. We have the target. So in S3, uh, we have uh, 1, 0, 0, 1. So that gives the target 0, 1, 0, uh, 0. Oh, that gives the target 0, 0. That, that gives the target 1, 0, 0, 1. So that's that target. Uh, if, on the other hand, and then now, and then, and then S five or S four, we're staying here on a zero, and we're going to S five on a one. So S five on a one. And then, and then uh, on a zero, we're going to S two. Why did S five? Oh, I put it in the wrong place. Put it in the wrong place. And then on an S4, on a zero, we're staying there. Oh, we have to delete one. Two. And then from S5 on a on a zero, we're going to S2. And then that's on a zero. And on a uh, on a one, we're going to S1. All right, now. Now, from S4, if we get a one, we're doing a zero. And we're doing a zero if we get a one. But on S5, 
if we get a zero, we're doing a one. And then on a on a one, we're getting a, we're doing a zero. So we only have two places where we're outputting ones here and uh, there. Can make these red, I guess. So those are those are so that's so that's okay okay how come this is stuck there oh, okay just screwed up. Yeah. Yeah, it is definitely screwed up. Move this over here. Now let's see if it'll go away. No. Such irritation. There we go. Now it's right. Okay. So there's the final graph. And you can see. So you can see that this one is this is pretty co complicated, um, but if you just kind of you know think it through one step at a time and ch double check yourself, and, and then when you see something that doesn't make sense, you start over and try and figure it out again. It's fine. Uh, anyway, I, I wouldn't expect I, I like I said this is a hard one. Wouldn't expect uh, that many students to necessarily get it right. Um, okay, let's look at this one real quickly, and then we will stop. Uh, we're already over time anyway. Um, okay, I'm just going to talk you through this. So here you have two inputs. Because we, we have an x1 and an x2, or whatever they, yeah, x2 and x1, they're ordered like this. And so because we have two inputs, we have, and that's n equals 2, 2 to the n, so we have four columns. Now how come we only have one column in the output? That's because it's a more. And the outputs are associated with just the nodes, not the links. All right. Well, how do we? How about our key maps? How's that going to work? Well, we're going to have four four nodes, so we're just going to take four flip. -flop, I mean, sorry, two flip flops, and we have two inputs. So our so we're going to have x two and x one on the top, and a and b down the side, and uh, of our k maps, and so that's how that's going to work. And so let's just do so. S0. So in S0, if our x2 is 1 and our x is 0, we stay here. So that's this one, S1. Uh, sorry. Uh, that's this That's this one, 1, 0. We stay here. If, on the other hand, both x2 and x1 are 0, we go to S1. So there's S1. If x2 is 1 and x1 is 0, so that would be 0, 1. On 0, 1, we're going to S3. So we put S3 in there. And on uh, and on one one we're going to S two, so we put S two in for one one, and that that covers all four possibilities, and you just go through. So for S one, S one, if we get a one zero, we're staying here, so we would, so we just we just copy this, and. This may be difficult. And if we get a, um, so what happens if we get a 0, 0 from S1? On a 0, 0, or on a 1, 1, we're going to S3. So on a 0, 0, we're going to S3. Yeah, I think it's, this is center. 
focused or something, just causing a bit of a problem. And and then we also uh, go to S3 on a 1, 1. And so now, yeah, and this is, this is going to be 2 on a 0, 0. And then the only one we need left from S1 is, so 1, 0, we stay there. Uh, 0, 0, and 1, 1, we go there. And on 0, 1, we go to S0. S0. So that would be here. Uh, sorry, that would be here. Now we have to figure this out. So uh, I guess we have to... Yeah, that's going to... Well, okay, so that deletes and that's there. That deletes and that's there. Ah, now we got it. Okay, and so forth. So you can see this is, and then what's the output? The output is a one. Okay. So, and you could do the rest of these and you'd see how that would work. Okay, so um, I'm not going to do any more. We're way over time. So I'm going to stop and uh, and uh, I'll continue to review for the test. I'm going to do a lot of these kind of problems because I want you thinking about them. Now in this problem, I'm going to give you the state graph and I'll make you ex extract it to the state table. But there'll be other problems where we're going to do, uh, where we'll, uh, I, I might even do a problem where I give you the state table, the transition table, and then you have to extract it into the flip-flops. And then... Uh, we also may give you another one. Let's see if I have a, no, so let me let me get rid of this one. Uh, save, yeah, we can save. Uh, we'll cancel for a minute. Let me just send this down. Well, let me save it as. Um, yeah, current folder. But instead of this, I'm gonna call it uh, solution. Okay, so here, here we're going to have, we're going to do, uh, we're going to do, oh, that's the same one. What the hell? Oh, I didn't get rid of it. Okay. Here's, um, so here's, a, here's, here's another one. We'll do this one. Uh, here's another one of those three variable. Uh, now, we'll do one like this. This is an SM chart. And you're going to have to read the problem, uh, fill it out, and then write out the DA the DB and the Z's. Okay. All right. That'll do it.